What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the evolution of Esperanto. Now Esperanto is a 130 year old language, but it is a living language, and it is evolving over time and changing based on the needs of the community and also based on the whims of the community of speakers. Now I've decided to make this video because I've seen some comments from particularly polyglots who say, you know, Esperanto is this language that's not a real language, it's not a living language. So I basically wanted to prove to you that it is evolving language, it is a changing language, and I'm going to use one word, and we're going to track this one word through the history of its use within Esperanto, and we're going to look at how it's changed over time. Now I'm not going to focus on the grammar of Esperanto, uh, because that's a totally different topic, and I will in the future talk about the evolution of the grammar of Esperanto, but in this video I wanted to focus on just one word, so we're going to focus on the word computer. Computer is a fairly new concept, but it's been around for some time time and I'm going to show you how this word has evolved in Esperanto and changed over time and I'm going to do this by first showing you early physical dictionaries which include the word computer and then I'm going to show you modern dictionaries mainly online ones so first up I have four physical dictionaries here with me one two three and four and after this, I'll show you two online dictionaries which are completely up to date. So the first dictionary I'm showing you is this one, Esperanto English Dictionary, and it's from J.C. Wells. And we're going to quickly have a look at when it was published, so we can get some time frame of what we're looking at here. So this dictionary was published in 1969. Now there is, an, I think, a more up-to-date version of, diction of this dictionary, but I wanted to get this one because it's 1969. So that's pro probably around the time computers were starting to first enter you know, general discussion within the community, you know, just in t between normal people in general. Obviously computers were around before then, but they were more of a scientific, mathematical, you know, study point. They weren't something you'd talk about in everyday conversation. Anyway, this is the oldest dictionary I have, physical oldest. So we're going to look at the word computer here. So, in here, if I go to it, computer, so they've got computer here. Have a look there. Now, what it says is computer is electrona calculilo, and they've also put a star next to a second word, which is computero. So, basically, they've said it's an electric calculator. Now, back then, calculilo, calculator, there was actually a different word for calculator, but that's how it would translate into modern Esperanto. So, what they were saying at that time frame was something along the lines of electric calculating tool, not necessarily the modern calculator that we use. And they've got the word computero. So, you can see they basically just grabbed that directly from English because that's where computers were invented within the English speaking world. And they've got a star next to it, kind of indicating that, you know, this is a, a new word, and they're recommending that you use Electrona Calculillo. So that was 1969. Let's move up. Next up, we have this dictionary here. By the way, if you're curious where I got these dictionaries, I literally just went to secondhand shops and asked, Do you have any Esperanto books? And, you know, in a lot of um, big second-hand bookshops, you will find Esperanto books. Okay, this is a third edition. The first was 1963, but this one's from 1985. Now, if I open this one, let's put this down, we have this one, funnily enough, doesn't even have the word for computer, but it does have the word for compute. So it shows you still, at that time frame in history, computers were still a fairly new concept. So let's have a look. You can see it says compute. And the word that they've got for compute is calculi. So remember in the previous one they were recommending calculilo, electrona calculilo, then computero. And this one they're just saying calculi for compute. So you can see that calculi is now taking on the meaning of compute within these two dictionaries. But previous to this it was to calculate. Okay, so now we've looked at those two. Let's move on to the next one. This is a, it's a beast of a dictionary, quite an interesting one. So this is not purely an Esperanto dictionary. It's actually a dictionary, I think, within 11 languages. Yes. So International Business Dictionary in 11 languages. And it's got English, Esperanto, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Italian, um, Dutch, Portuguese, um, not 100%. I I think that's like Slovakian or something, I don't know. And then you got uh, Japanese and Chinese. So now let's jump into this one. Oh, by the way, I need to point out what year this one is from. 1990. 
So we've gone up quite a time frame now. We've gone from 1963, we're now up to 1990. So here, we have computer. And you can actually see the definitions are both in English and in Esperanto, and then there's a translation into other languages. So the word they've got for computer there is computado. Interesting. So it's a separate word again. We still don't see any reference to the modern word, which is computilo. Now here, this was from the 1990s, so this is not that long ago. Okay, let's swap now to a more modern dictionary. This dictionary here, Esperanto English, Esperanto Dictionary, you can all actually see these are all from totally different companies and groups. This one was published in 1995. So now we are definitely in the age of computers. Windows 95 was actually one of the first systems I installed apart from Windows 3.1. So let's see what the word for computer was at this stage. Computers have definitely entered the general community. We have computer. Now, the word they're recommending is computador. So, so far, it started with computero, moved into computador, and it seems like computador is now starting to establish itself. They've even given a word for laptop computer here, and they've called it surgenua computador, which literally translates to a uh, computer that sits on your knees. Funnily enough, both of these terminologies don't exist in modern Esperanto. I'm now going to quickly show you some online dictionaries. So as you can see in these online dictionaries, the modern word for computer is computilo. So it's changed again. It's gone from computero to computoro to computilo. And computilo is now the general word we use in the Esperanto community for computer. You will not see anyone except for maybe a really old Esperanto speaker who uses computador or computero. Computilo is a word that has replaced both of these other words and I believe the reason is is because Esperanto is a logical language. And we prefer, in general, to follow the idea that we build words from other words rather than introducing new words. So computero was a new concept. It was a completely new word. Computoro, again, was a new concept, completely new word. But computi means to compute. And ilo means tool. So you shove those two together. Why learn a compu completely new word when you can just learn a new kunmetajo, which is a new joining of two uh, words. So a word with an affix. So as you can see, Esperanto has evolved over time. And what generally happens with Esperanto and basically any language is that when a new concept or idea enters a bunch of competing forms will appear for that word and eventually one of those forms will generally win out. So at the beginning we had two competing forms computero computoro and it was eventually defeated by computilo. By the way remember this dictionary said laptop was surgenua computoro the modern word for laptop is teco computilo, which literally translates to briefcase computer. So as you can see, Esperanto is an evolving language, it's not a static language, and it actually evolves in general to become more logical. So in future videos, I'll look at some of the grammar of Esperanto and how that's evolved. Anyway, if you've liked this video, like it, share it around, sub to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video.